Around 1960, when Franz Klein had started selling some paintings, making some money, he'd been working almost exclusively with house paint. Now, Sidney Janis, his gallerist, didn't like that idea so much, perhaps because he was looking for fine art prices, not hardware store prices. So what he did, actually, one night was to break into Klein's studio, take all of the house paint, and replace it with Windsor Newton fine art grade paints. Well, the next day, Klein came in, said, what is all this? Took it out of there, went back to the hardware store, got some more house paint, and went back to work. So why was Klein so enamored with house paint? Well, because it's cheap, because it's kind of crass, because it's kind of consumerist, because it's not fine art. Uh, all of those are on the table. How about the material itself? Let's take a look in the studio. Looking at the paint in the can, it looks quite different from artist quality paint. It's very, very fluid. Uh, it dries to a very, very hard, very, very flat and high glossy surface. Things that were all very seductive to Klein, in addition to the velocity of paint that could be pulled across the canvas with a brush with this paint because it is such a low viscosity paint. Looking at Franz Klein's painting called Chief from 1950, you might be surprised to learn that just two years prior to the making of this painting, Klein spent most of his time in the studio making figurative drawings and paintings of things like furniture, chairs, for example. Well, around that time, Klein visited his friend Willem de Kooning. Now, de Kooning invited Klein over to show him a new toy, a projector, something that could enlarge a drawing or photograph many, many times up to the scale uh, of, say, a wall. Now, Klein, at that time, was drawing these chairs, if you will, uh, on the pages of a phone book, and when he projected these onto the wall, he realized that they were so large that no longer could he see the chair. Uh, in fact, he couldn't even read the numbers and letters of the phone book page. Instead, he had abstracted uh, black on white, or in that case, yellow in the phone book, abstracted images out of his source material, again, drawings and the numbers and letters in a phone book. What Klein saw was something that looked a little bit like this. It was a transformative moment for Klein, and he realized that the abstract language that he wanted to pursue was based on that, figure on ground, or in this case, black on white. Now, when Klein decided that he was going to become an abstract painter, it did not mean that he was done with drawing. In fact, this painting, which looks very spontaneous, looks like it perhaps could have been done in just half an hour, maybe even less, actually was the result of careful studies. Klein made abstract sketches and then quite carefully transferred those sketches onto this large-scale painting, again with fast dripping enamel paint. But it's still one layer more complicated because this is not simply black on white. Because this is actually black on white, but then white back on top of the black black back on top of the white again. It's an iterative process, uh, giving and going, if you will, between these two colors. One step further, we're not talking about just one color white, for if we look here, we have kind of a cool, crisp-looking white, and if we look here, we find a much warmer white color. Paintings like this are often referred to as action paintings, because we can almost imagine the painter as a kind of dancer whose movements in front of the canvas are recorded in time and space.